Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Asbury Memorial. My name is Candace Jenkins. I'm the Connectional Ministries Coordinator here at the church. A special welcome this morning to our visitors. And if you're visiting, we'd love for you to have a name tag. And that board, you can put your name and sign up right in the breezeway. And we will have a coffee hour after service today in Holiday Hall. So please join us if you can. And next Sunday, we have the big coffee hour to celebrate our Miss Virginia holiday. The matriarch of our church who recently passed away at the age of 99. She was a member of this church for almost 60 years. And for the first time ever, we will hold a special memorial service during our Sunday worship service. So please be with us next Sunday to remember Miss Virginia. Please wear red, that was her favorite color, and please bring food if you're able, and we'll have a really big celebration and lunch together. I'd like to welcome those worshiping online with us today. We're always glad to have you here. And it's great when you send a chat and we know who you are and where you're uh, worshiping from. A couple of real quick reminders. The Raise the Roof calendar campaign, still going on. You guys are impressive. The number is getting close to the goal and you can sign up in the hallway by the Holiday Hall or you can go online and you can um, make your contribution there on our website. We, have a, we are sponsoring a blood drive on Thursday, August the 24th, here in Holiday Hall. That'll be Thursday from 2 to 4, and you can register today in coffee hour with Miss Rhonda Reed, or you can go online and sign up that way. As of this past Monday, the Red Cross has adopted the new FDA guidance regarding blood donors, regardless of gender or sexual orientation. To celebrate this progress, please see Rhonda at coffee hour. This is a big deal. Yes. Something else going on at Asbury and Wesley Oak. Please join us for two special viewings of the short documentary called God's Love Split. Directed by Paloma Holub and spotlights our own August Alderman. The film discusses the disaffiliation process of the United Methodist Church and the various perspectives of churches in the South regarding the positive and negative impacts of such a decision. One viewing will be today at coffee hour, um, well, right after coffee hour, and it's short. It's only about 10 minutes, so it's very well worth your time if you're able to stay. But also the second viewing will be held in two weeks at Wesley Oak right after their service at 1045. Uh, as very tradition, if you're celebrating a birthday and you're 80 plus, you're one of our elder berries, and we are celebrating today Miss Barbara Passano. I don't think Barbara's here. I bet she's watching online, so we're gonna sing happy birthday if you'll stand. Our camera today is right here if you'll look at the back, up at the top. Happy birthday, Barbara. If you would, please check out our newsletter. Our, we have a monthly newsletter just recently posted on our website. It's full of information, our programs, our study groups, and things that will be starting back in the fall. And I want to introduce someone today that you will see later on in the service. Our offertory this morning will be sung by Ashley Nunez. Her upcoming engagements include being an emerging artist in the Milne's Voice Studio at the Savannah Voice Festival. 
with Cheryl Milne singing the role of second woman in Dido and Ananias. She was the second place winner for the St. Petersburg Opera Guild Voice Competition and finalist for the Music International Grand Prix Competition in New York in 2023. Ashley received her Bachelor of Music degree at Stetson University and her Master of Music degree at Louisiana State University in vocal performance. We welcome Ashley to Asbury and look forward to hearing from her during the offertory. Thank you for being with us. A friendly reminder to please turn off your cell phone for our very special time together. And I hope you have a very meaningful worship experience today. Thank you. able for the call to worship. In the warmth of a summer day, in, a, in the smile of a young mother, in the agony of despair, the shock of an unexpected diagnosis. in the struggles and fractures of life with family and friends.
through 9. And God arranged for a broadleaf tree to spring up. It grew over Jonah to cool him off and get him out of his angry sulk. Jonah was pleased and enjoyed the shade. Life was looking up. But then God sent a worm. By dawn of the next day, the worm had bored into the shade tree, and it withered away. The sun came up, and God sent a hot, blistering wind from the east. The sun beat down on Jonah's head, and he started to faint. He prayed to die. I'm better off dead. Then God said to Jonah, what right do you have to get angry about this shade tree? Jonah said, Plenty of right. It's made me angry enough to die. For the word of God in scripture and story, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks. Let's center ourselves as we enter into a time of collective prayer as I lead us. Uh, in a little bit, I'll ask if you want to call out a name in request for prayer. Just understand if you yell out unspoken, you have contradicted yourself. And at that point, an usher will show you to the door. <laughs> no, they won't. But. Uh, Let's take a moment silently and, uh, and center ourselves and our thoughts towards God. Eternal God, you are present with us throughout our lives, even when others intend to do us harm. May we learn to live together in unity, that in all we do, we may continue to sing your praises now and forever. Remember that God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgiving and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. This morning, our hearts are heavy because of the tragic situation in Maui and the devastation that is going on there. I am often reminded of how many people uh, not shown on TV screens or on newsreels suffer various forms of violence or addiction, human trafficking, a, a number of ways that, that people are, are made to suffer. And so, Lord, we lift these up to you and others by name. If you want to call out a name, you may, please.
just as you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit. Through loving your creation, our sisters and brothers, open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of those we have lifted to you. This morning, Lord, speak through your friend and servant, August. Open our ears to hear your word that he shares. And may it draw us closer to you that the world may be one with you as you are one with us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us and his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this And now uh, we are ready for those in our congregation to go to godly play to follow Miss Kathy and Chris for this time. missionary moments leading music elsewhere, he and Jason slipped in and uh, have made themselves a regular and uh, strong part of our faith community. And uh, August has dedicated himself, and rightly so, to being a minister, as he already is with the Stevens ministry. And he uh, do, does work also with our sister church at Wesley Oak. And I mentioned to Caleb yesterday that August was speaking at Asbury today. He says, I hear him all the time at Wesley Oak. That's nothing new to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Caleb. Uh, so we, we, uh, we, enjoy, have, we enjoy getting to know you and look forward to hearing you today. Uh, he uh, uh, works uh, on hair for other people, evidently, and uh, he is a student at Chicago Theological Seminary, and uh, we've, we've discussed some of his uh, studies and the things that he's learning, and uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to bounce ideas off of each other. So uh, I know we have a treat in store for us today. So we, when, uh, after the hymn, you come and uh, break open the word of truth for us. Let's stand together.
Good morning, church family. Thank you, Reverend Danny. So the famous last words of Jonah in the book of the Bible is the prophet saying, yes, I'm angry enough to die. God responds to this statement from Jonah, and God tries to reason with Jonah, engaging the prophet, trying to get the man to think about what he has said. But the book closes there, as we might imagine, Jonah has closed himself off. We don't know if Jonah answered God's closing questions outside of the scriptures. Today, we look at this ancient yet timeless story about Jonah's encounter with God. And if we are looking closely at angry and judgmental Jonah and hearing this story with our hearts, might we just get a glimpse of ourselves? Today we see someone who went running from the call of God, and then running from an extraordinary event of loving reconciliation between a people and the mysterious divine. But God won't let go of Jonah. God will not let go. This past Friday was my last day in the hair business. (laughs) I have officially stopped doing hair, and I fully commit myself to my seminary, pastoral, and chaplaincy studies. I also need a few part-time jobs, so (laughs) hook me up if you know of something. As always, I've been asking myself some big questions. And they are like, do we want God to have compassion on our enemies? Can we love like God? How far does grace go? How far and wide can we forgive? And how do I hope for healing for someone who has hurt me? Lots of questions. And actually, before we get started, can everyone just look at the camera back there and wave and say, hey, y'all. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, on a sea far, far away, and in the belly of a fish far, far away, and then back on land, happened a series of fantastic and strange events. Fantastic and strange events that hold deep theological truths. This story happens in events that are big and fast and feel like a satire or a parable of a prophet. The elements are humorous and exaggerated and we might overlook the many meanings when our imaginations are occupied by those elements. The events in this book make us think, what the (laughs) adventures and misadventures of life, whether we are running for it or running from it. So, 
here is Jonah. A very successful prophet we will see. Jonah, who may be like us, always expects God to agree with him. God calls on Jonah. God tells Jonah to go to the big city of Nineveh and prophesy to the people. <laughs> is it that God is asking Jonah to do something that seems impossible by asking him to go to this big city and prophesy? Because Jonah runs. And not towards Nineveh, where God told him to go, but he runs away from Nineveh. <laughs> away from God's call, in the opposite direction, toward Tarshish, toward the sea. And he hops on a ship with some sailors. I don't know about you, but towards the sea would be the last place I would run to <laughs> if I were on the run from God. I don't know, I think I'd run to hide in the woods or under some rocks or under my bed. Probably not to the sea where there might be a big storm a Bruin. But Jonah runs to the sea. And God sent a big storm towards the boat Jonah was on. And it rocked the boat and scared the other sailors. They cried out to their gods. And where was Jonah? Jonah was asleep. <laughs> Below deck. How can you sleep at a time like this, Jonah? You better pray to your gods, the sailors say. Maybe your god will have mercy on us and save us from this terrible storm. And they ask Jonah, exactly who are you anyway? Where have you come from? Who is your god and what have you done? Jonah answered the sailors, I am a Hebrew. My God made the land and the sea. And here Jonah is actually already prophesying to the sailors, possibly without realizing it. The storm around them intensified, and the sailors asked Jonah what to do. Jonah told them to throw me overboard. The sailors tried to regain control of the boat as the winds blew and the rain poured, but they could not. So they did as Jonah said. They threw him off the boat into the choppy waters, and the storm calmed. And perhaps Jonah thought, ha, they threw me over, and this way, I can escape God's mission for me. And the sailors worshipped God as the storm ceased. And to think, already Jonah has success as a prophet. But wait, there's more. But wait, there is more. God is going to keep after Jonah. It's not going to be that easy to get away from God. God sends a big fish Jonah's way. <laughs> but, my family, there is much more to this story than a fish. It is not the tail of a fish or a fishy tail, and it is definitely not the tail of a whale. It was a fish God sent to swallow Jonah up. And Jonah spent three days there in the fish's stomach. 
where he prayed to God. The scripture says, Jonah calls out from the belly of Sheol. Here in the belly of this fish, Jonah experiences Sheol, a netherworld, a dead land. Jonah is there in solitary confinement. He is trapped and isolated. But God hears Jonah's prayer and commands the fish to vomit Jonah onto dry land, and so does the fish. <laughs> now, again, the word of God, uh, God comes upon Jonah. God says, go and prophesy to the big city Nineveh. This time, Jonah probably swarmed with flies as he's been in the belly of a fish for three days, finally decides to do what God said. And with an eight-word sermon, the people of Nineveh believe. In the World Book of Records, maybe the fastest sermon ever. <laughs> Jonah's sermon was... Forty days more, and Nineveh will be overturned. That's it. No prophet has this much success, this quick and easy. The people of Nineveh repent and believe God and proclaim a fast and all put on sackcloth and sit in ashes. Even the king removes his fancy robe, puts on sackcloth, and sits in ashes. The king tells everyone in the city to stop their evil ways and to turn their backs on injustice. And everyone does, great and small. Even the animals repent. Even the animals, even to the cows, they fast, put on sackcloth, sit in ashes, and repent. This is for sure success for a prophet, but Jonah is not satisfied. God sees the people of Nineveh and turn away from evil. And God does not punish the people. Even though the Ninevites have listened to Jonah, Jonah is disappointed. Jonah projects his prejudice onto God. Jonah, like many religious people, thought God was exclusively on his side. He put his thoughts into the mind of God, but God thinks differently. And Jonah says, I knew it. I knew it. This is why I didn't want to come here in the first place, God. I knew you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, compassionate, and abounding in steadfast love. God, take my life. I would rather die now than to see my enemies receive your love. To which God replies, Really? <laughs> really, Jonah? So again, I ask us, do we want God to have compassion on our enemies? How far does grace go? How much can we forgive? And can I hope for healing for the person who has hurt me? God guides us through everyone we meet. 
even through the mean people of Nineveh. People can be mean and try to deny that we are just as equally God's creations, just as God made us, but they point our lives in different directions. Sometimes people surprise us in ways that shock us or make us feel like we don't belong. But maybe, even then, they are benevolent helpers, showing us our own resiliency and love within ourselves, and that we sparkle more than usual. And that reassures and affirms God is within us, the creator of steadfast love. God is revealed in difference, not in sameness. The book of Jonah tells us about Jonah's very creative encounter with God and leaves us to look at ourselves the book of Jonah causes us to reflect on God's justice and God's mercy, and maybe to think about what we think other people deserve. And to think, if Jonah has a problem with Nineveh, there's no better friend for him to have than a Ninevite. Before you hate someone, know someone. On July the 29th in Brooklyn, there was a group of friends who stopped at a gas station Beyonce was playing from their car, and they were dancing and voguing around their car. They were yelled at by another group of guys, and you've probably heard the language before. Hateful, homophobic, anti-gay language, and hateful, racist, anti-black language. The group yelled at the friends to stop their dancing. There was physical confrontation, and one of the people dancing, O'Shea Sibley, was stabbed and died. O'Shea was 28 years old. How does someone automatically hate someone else? Without knowing them, how is someone angry enough even to die like Jonah is, or angry enough to kill? We need to know O'Shea's story, not just the story of his death, but the story of his life. He was a dancer. He was and is beloved by his community. The young person who stabbed him should have known his story. We need to get to know each other. To know each other for who we really are. Before you hate someone, know someone.
Before you hate someone, know someone. Amen. Amen. Because stories can change opinions and hearts can change minds. When Jonah realizes God is not going to punish and destroy Nineveh, he goes to sit just outside the city and watch. When Jonah walked through that city of Nineveh, did he see the people? Did he really, really, really see the people? Or did he only see what he wanted to see? God observes Jonah sitting alone and decides to have a plant grow up over Jonah's head, a shade plant. And the plant, it provides Jonah with shade from the sun, and Jonah is content. The next day, God decides to appoint a worm <laughs> to eat the plant, and the plant withers away. God sends some hot air, and the sun beats down on Jonah's head, and sunburnt Jonah gets haughty. He says, I would rather die than live. Jonah, is it right for you to be so concerned about a shade plant and for God to not be concerned about the big city of Nineveh with all the people and all the animals? You would have God destroy it? You would rather die than to have a loving and compassionate God. You would rather die than to see God have compassion on your enemies. Do we love God with the same heart with which we hate our enemies? Can we love God while we hate our enemies? God may be giving you in your life a challenging call for reconciliation. As God spoke about concern for the big city of Nineveh, we hear our loving, compassionate God. We learn God prefers redemption over punishment. Mercy and justice. Professor Abraham Heschel writes, Beyond justice and anger lies the mystery of compassion. The feelings Jonah has about the Ninevites give us space to think about our own capacity to forgive, to reconcile, and to have mercy. And to think about the work of reconciling between the church and people the church has hurt and the work ahead of us to prove our church to our community as a loving and affirming church. Some of those other questions that I've been asking myself. What good is our religion if it does nothing to change our world? What good is our church if it is doing nothing in our neighborhood? 
What good is our religion if it has saved only our own souls and done nothing for anybody else in the world? Jonah, I know it's hard to forgive. I know it's hard to let go when you have been hurt, when your heart has been broken, and you are angry. But you can give it to God. Because God hurts with you. God's heart is broken with yours. God feels you're angry, and God won't let go. And maybe, maybe outside of the scriptures, Jonah's last words are, thanks be to God, who is so gracious, so merciful, slow to anger, compassionate, and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. tithes and offerings.
it is from the abundance that you have blessed us with that we freely give these gifts this morning, that your church may continue to grow both here and throughout the globe. In your name we pray. Amen.
Divine mystery, mothering God, let us let go with you. Let us go with you. Let us live, let us forgive, and let us hear the stories. In the loving spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.